Hey guys, this is Josh here with Trillium Wild Edibles, and the plant you're looking at is giant ragweed. There are a couple of ways that you can tell this. One of the first and foremost is these leaves. You may notice on this leaf that there are three lobes. You may notice how they come to kind of like a point. On the sides or the margins of these leaves, you're going to see these very fine serrations or teeth running all the way down the side. Some of these leaves can get really, really big like you can see here, and this is one of the reasons it's called giant ragweed. Another one of the reasons is because it can grow all the way up to 15 feet tall. And if you live anywhere in the corn belt of the United States, you're probably going to see this plant growing along the edge of cornfields. And pretty much anywhere else it can grow. This thing is obnoxious as it can be. And one of the most obnoxious things about this plant is surprisingly enough, this plant is the main cause for late summer allergies. Usually this plant is in full bloom and its pollen is spreading the same time you see the goldenrods out. And a lot of people misblame the goldenrod for their summer allergies when in reality it's this plant. Now there's also common ragweed which is a little smaller. Its leaves look very, very, very different from this though. Like I said on the giant ragweed you're going to notice three lobes. You may also even notice some of these very large leaves with even five lobes. The leaves on this plant are extremely variable. And you can see here on the same plant, there's one leaf that's just ovate or lance shaped. It doesn't have any lobes at all. Now granted, this leaf has been chewed a little bit, but it only has four lobes instead of three or five. So you're going to notice a lot of variation in these leaves. So don't really count on a distinct number of lobes whenever you find this plant. Right now I'm about 20 feet back or more from these plants, and you can see just how much they stick out. You can see how large those leaves really are. I mean, they are absolutely huge. Now some of the very unique features about this plant as far as identification is concerned is these very fine bristles running up and down the stem. These bristles are very stiff and they feel sort of like Velcro in my opinion. I don't know if you can hear that, but the more you rub them you may also notice that they kind of rub off a little bit. You can see how it's now missing those bristles there. I'm not sure exactly what these are what these bristles are supposed to do. They don't sting in any way. They feel just kind of rough and scratchy more than anything. And you'll also notice these little bristles on the leaves. I don't know if you can see them there. They're very hard to see. But you'll notice on the top and on the bottom, you'll notice how small these are on the very bottom, but they do feel kind of rough and almost like sandpaper. The leaves have a feeling of sandpaper in my opinion. You can hear that whenever I rub it and you can see these, maybe you'll see these little bristles here. You can see those bristles running down the veins there in the back of the leaf. These are what's responsible for that rough and sandpapery like feeling. And on the stem, like I said, you're going to notice these little fine bristles or little hairs running all up and down this plant. You're going to notice them even on the leaf stems. And you may also notice that this plant grows with an opposite leaf structure, meaning that its leaves grow on opposite sides of the stem, just like you can see here. And it does this all the way up the plant. I'll show you a couple more in the area. And sometimes you might actually even find them alternating, but usually they grow in this opposite pattern. At least every time I see a uh, giant ragweed, its leaves are always opposite. Here on this one, you may see this red tinge running along here on the leaf stem. That's another feature that you might see on some of them, and some of them you might not. This plant has a lot of variations, and one of its uh, Latin names, its first Latin name, is Ambrosia. So this is an Ambrosia species, and a lot of Ambrosias are in the Aster family, meaning that they are very notorious for producing obnoxious pollen. And when that time comes, the pollen is going to come out of these flower buds. Now right now these are budding, these are, haven't even started flowering yet. But when they do and they start releasing their pollen, all you have to do is touch this plant and you're just going to see pollen flying out. You're just going to see this yellow-like pollen flying out everywhere. And that's what's responsible for your summertime allergies. Here you can see this yellow greenish flower starting to come out on this little bud here. This one's about ready to start flowering. And here you can see even more of these little yellow or greenish, yellow greenish flower buds that are starting to come out. And this whole, this spike right here, all these little bitty green ball-like things will eventually turn yellow and those are the fl those are going to be the flowers and that's where the pollen is going to release from. And this plant can be so obnoxious and you may be able to tell just how many flower clusters are trying to start right here. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, 
seven, seven or more flower clusters just right here at the top. And then at the end of each leaf node, or at the end of each leaf stem, like you can see here, another flower bud is starting. If we go over here to the other side, we see the same thing. So this plant produces a lot of flowers, and that means a lot of pollen. So if you have late summertime allergies, and you see this plant growing in your property, get rid of it. Some people actually experience allergic reactions just simply by touching this plant. So that's something else you may want to be cautious of. So if you are allergic to this and you think you might be, wear gloves whenever you pull it just to be safe so you don't get any possible allergic reactions. I myself know I'm not allergic to it, so I don't really worry about it. But that may not be the case with you, so it helps to be cautious. And you can see another one here getting ready to start flowering as well. You can see these little bit of yellow greenish like flower buds starting. Here's a really detailed close-up of the start of these flower buds and these flower clusters. You can see these little hairs, these little bristles. Here you can see another really good close-up of the flower of ragweed. Now this plant does supposedly have some medicinal uses. I am not sure of what those uses are because I don't use it. However, this plant does have another use that I will talk about that I am attempting to try to use it for. Supposedly the stem, because it's very stiff and almost woody, you can hear, you know, when I flick it, it kind of sounds like wood. And one of the good uses of this plant is you can supposedly use it for atlatl darts, which I hope so, and that's kind of one of the reasons I'm letting a lot of it grow, so I can hopefully get myself a good source of atlatl darts. How well it'll work, I'm not quite sure yet, but supposedly it was used pre in prehistoric times for atlatl darts. So maybe some of you guys who might be a little crafty may be able to maybe able to get some sort of arrow out of this as well. I don't I don't quite know. It may be something that's worth checking into. Because it is very, very, very stiff. I mean it might work in survival situations. It might not be a good permanent arrow or a good permanent atlatl dart, but it might work perfect for uh, survival situations. So I thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something. If you want to learn more about edible or medicinal plants, make sure to subscribe.